What's going on, people? Let's talk about buying shoes, right? Now, this isn't going to be so much me talking about, say, like, how do I decide between this or that. If you've seen some of my videos in the past, maybe a lot of my videos in the past, you know that when it comes to making decisions, I'm not really, like, good at it. I tend to just avoid that. And if I like two things, I just get both of the things, right? And then past that, it's not going to be so much of figuring out, like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Like, what's pulling my attention? And like, no, I'm I'm pretty easy going. It's a, even though I buy a lot of stuff, I'm still kind of a casual consumer mindset. There are things that I like, right? This is a 350, a Jordan 12, the newest Air Max model, whatever that may be, the newest Ultra's model, whatever that may be. Those things get a solid pass. After that, anything else that makes its way onto the list is generally like based off of curiosity as it revolves around comfort, right? Like, oh, gel NYC, huh? That should be promising. Maybe I'll pick up a pair of those. Oh, Pro Grade Omni 9. That should be pretty all right, right? Let's go, let's see how it works out, right? And one thing I will say on that note right there, if you are deciding between two things that are similar and you're not like me and you just want to get one, I would say in cases like that, if you find that both things are pretty similar, just get the one that looks best. It's just easier that way for other people, not so much for me. Again, I'm just getting both. Now, what this is going to be more on the lines of is what goes into me actually like buying these shoes, right? To some extent, kind of like the research side of it or whatever. So I don't really follow a lot of releases. I probably should because sometimes that would make things easier. And it wouldn't be such like a last minute rush to be like, oh, where is, where is this thing going to be? Where can I find it, you know? Where's all the information? But the other side of it is if you follow all these releases, then you'll probably end up buying more, at least, or at least wanting to buy more. So since I don't, it kind of works out because I already have a lot, right? I don't really need any more, so that's why I'm being a little more selective. But the thing that, that I'll put out there, right? So let's say this is going to be the situation I work with. If there's something out there that you know of, right? And you think to yourself, this is something that I want in my lineup of things to wear, right? It happens, right? So the biggest thing for me, right, if if it's already released, it's somewhat easy. If you know, especially if you know that it's going to be out there and available. One thing that I find super helpful is basically just kind of going through and looking at the style codes. Like if you see an article about it, you'll usually see it in there. They look a little bit different based on the different brands and stuff like that. I forget how these Nike ones are. It's like it's like five characters and then like three characters. And the Adidas ones, I think those are just five. Well, that the Nike's in with numbers at the end, but I think the Adidas ones is just like five alphanumeric, you know, stuff like that. Like the Asics ones tend to be a little bit longer, but look similar to the Nike ones. The Vans ones are just like a just like a keyboard just threw up or something. Either way, you find that, you do a quick search for that online or whatever, and that'll generally tell you where that particular thing is in stock, right? That's how I found the last shoes that I needed from the, was that the Safari Presto pack? I don't know if I have a video about that. I, I would assume I do. I have to at least co cover one of the three. But times like that, I was like, okay, I want to find this last one, and so I do all the research. And then you end up finding the different sites and stuff, which ended up being SVD. And in that case, it was a site at a little over, not overpriced, but conversion-wise, I paid more than I wanted to, but I really wanted it. So, I mean, I guess I was fine with paying it because I did it, right? But then you see that, you know, okay, I'll just kind of keep that in the memory bank of things to go back to, right? So that part kind of makes that a little easier or whatever. Also, that's why when if you've ever paid attention to like the descriptions in my videos, like the actual reviews or the titles, I'll often have the style code in there. So that way, if people are want to know what to look for, it's like right there. So that way, you don't have to bother me asking for it. It's also in the video, usually in the first couple seconds in modern times. Older ones, I didn't put the side of the boxes in there and stuff. But either way, so that's something, right? Also, on that same note, right, when you're doing all the research and stuff, going around to different sites. One of the sites that I've seen is, is it like Sneaktorious, I think. Like, that's pretty good for like raffles, right? So I've been there a couple times just to see like what's 
where things are going to be because sometimes you look at something and you see a site that has it but there are a lot of web pages out there that have a lot of similar things right like bstn right like or some bts whatever that site is overkill right there there are a lot of these other random little web pages that i hear about and i know they're reputable sites but since i've never really dealt with them i don't think to go there but when I go to that like sneak Torius page to look for where all like the raffles might be, especially back in the 350 days, that was super helpful. And I think Soul Links does the same sort of thing, right? But I just saw more on the former page than the latter. But check both, right? So that's something. And then past that, you know, one of the other things is just kind of thinking about how much do you really want these things, right? Because it's the price of things can should be a factor right it isn't always i see things all the time and look at it and i'm like okay whatever they whatever amount of money they want they can have it because i mean if it's like asics or whatever like, i know they're not going to be asking for a lot so that's why i'm like sure whatever just check out process let's do this right but other stuff you might want to consider like especially like i was just talking about with with these right here because I was just talking about these a moment ago. I wanted these a fair amount when they first came around, right? Because there's a bit of nostalgia. That's, I guess, the other thing that makes me buy shoes, right? But at this point, the nostalgia, those releases, I think the Obsidian 12s are the last thing on my, like, nostalgia list to pick up, right? Saving the best for last, I suppose. But I saw these, thought, yeah, oh, this could be cool to have, right? For 200 and something dollars? <laughs> Maybe not, right? But, you know... Fast forward several months and several deals later, and I was able to get these for 90, right? So if it's something that you see and it's looking like it's gonna be like a general release sort of thing, I mean, that was labeled a quick strike, so you never really know, but other things, sometimes you kind of get a gauge on stuff. Even like right now, it seems that a lot of things have stopped really selling out immediately. Those sizes will disappear, but then you'll see, oh, these Space Jams sold out over here, but Apparently Dick's Sporting Goods has like all of them in stock over there. So that's like a week later, right? So it's getting a little better as far as not having to jump on things, which is good because you do find yourself wanting stuff sometimes and then you jump into like, okay, I need to get this, need to get this. But now that that's not the case and things are hanging out a little bit more, again, going back to what I was saying, you can look these things up and maybe you'll find some of these like somewhat more obscure sites that are still reputable. Always do your research on that and say, oh, well, I can, instead of buying this straight from like adidas.com, I, I can just get this over here from Foot Locker because they've got whatever coupon code. Always do a search for the coupon codes, right? You might find some that are working and some that aren't, you know, just, it's not like they're going to ban you for trying a code that, you know, is invalid or whatever. Best case scenario, it works. Worst case scenario, it doesn't. It's pretty much that simple. But a lot of sites do often do that, especially holiday time or those like, oh, j jump on the mailing list and save 10% or something. A lot of stuff like that goes around too. So it kind of helps with buying the, buying the shoes and all that stuff, right? But ultimately, like the biggest thing for me is really just like the part that I led with, which is just kind of looking at where all it is. So then you know, that'll also kind of give you a somewhat of a heads up as to how difficult or how easy it could be to pick up this upcoming thing, right? I forget what it was. Oh, like the, those red and, well, mostly white and black, but, but a little bit of red, those 12s, the taxi flips. When I, I won that raffle through sneakers and stuff, right? And once I saw that, I was like, okay, these are definitely going to be everywhere because that site is I win with them often enough that I'll try, but usually when if I do win, it's also a pretty good indication that like everybody is going to be able to get these from somewhere, or nobody wants them, which is why everybody can get them from somewhere, right? Not sure if it's numbers or interest in times like that, but there are there are a couple factors in there just to consider, you know, when you're going out and buying things, because this is a somewhat expensive habit, right? So it's good to be able to have some idea of like, where all can you look? What can you do to maybe like broaden your search or whatever? And also I've heard some good things about like the eBay authentication process from other people. So assuming what I heard, like 
six months to a year ago is still valid. That's also a good place to look, right? I can't speak on it myself. I've only dealt with StockX and GOAT, but even then my bids don't go over retail and usually it's like a nice chunk under anyways. So that's just kind of, you know, your mileage may vary over there. But for the most part, buying shoes, it's a thing that kind of sucks because it's expensive or whatever. And then you get them and then you just have them and it's like, well, in my case, I can wear these like today. And then if I want to keep this rotation going, these things aren't coming out for another who knows how long. I mean, I had these on today. I haven't worn a pair of Air Max 90s since like late 2022, right? Yeah. And I haven't even really noticed it, you know? Have you? No. Because I mean, every now and then I'll talk about the shoes I wore, but I haven't even done a review on a pair in like even longer, I think, right? I didn't know what the last pair I bought was. But whatever. I'm just putting this out there, just kind of like some food for thought or whatever, because it's a thing that came to mind. Earlier today, I was doing some unboxings and stuff, so same with like the the Champs shoes. I picked these up from Champs, right? Because I saw them there, didn't see the pink pair. And I could have waited, you know, and just thought like, okay, maybe the, the website hasn't fully updated and they haven't uploaded everything just yet. That happens all the time too, should have mentioned that. But later on, they did also have the pink pair available as well, but I had already just moved on to the Adidas site and bought them there because again, do a quick search or just kind of go to the obvious. I mean, it's an Adidas shoe, so it's likely going to be on the Adidas site, right? But, you know, it's one of those times where I was trying to just get this purchase in because I was like, I don't know if these things are going to be any kind of limited that they shouldn't be, but they're not for me. It's a gift and I really want to like get it. If it was for me, I'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll wait and see how this all plays out, but whatever. So there you go. Just some, some rambling or whatever, something that you can listen to in the background and give you some kind of thoughts on what to do. But I'm sure those right there, I'll probably see on the Adidas sites and everywhere else with some kind of discount, but I can't complain about it, right? I was okay with paying the full hundred later on when they're discounted or whatever. It's not going to be a big deal, right? I get through on enough discounts on other things and stuff that in the end it all kind of balances out. But for the most part, I'm I'm still coming out on top, I think, because I do a lot of clearance type shopping. So, you know, splurging on full price, even though full price was only 100, not so bad. For me to you, have a nice rest of your day or rest of your night, whatever it is, wherever you are. I think I covered everything I had in my mind earlier. When I do these things, I just sit down and just start talking. So... Sometimes it might come off kind of weird and like jump around a lot, but again, that's just normal conversation and that's really all this is. So thanks for listening or whatever. Leave some tips down below if you care to. Maybe somebody else that's listening to this will see those and they'll be like, oh wow, that's also helpful. So, you know, you can kind of keep this whole thing going, but you know, or you could not, whatever. It's up to you. Later people. So I'm just going to slip this in here somewhere. One thing that you could do and I, don't know why I forgot to mention this, but if you buy something and like the price drops within the return period anyways, some sites will do like a little price match thing and just give you a credit, right? So that's cool. Other sites, maybe not. So what you could do is you buy it again at like the discounted price, do a return on the previous one using the newer one that has been unworn and whatnot. And then you get like your credit back from like the first purchase, which would obviously be more money back to you. So obviously that's not quite worth doing depending on like if, how much the difference is, but it's something to think about. So there's that.